We will be going live shortly. Thank you guys for joining. We'll be here soon. Just waiting on Joanne. How are you? Welcome to YNS Live with my guest, Joanna Kleinman. She is the author and the podcast host of Dethroning Your Inner Critic. You can see her little scroll going underneath us. And she is, so as I said, she's the author. She's also a licensed licensed psycho. What is it? I'm going to say it wrong. Licensed psychotherapist. Licensed psychotherapist. So welcome, Joanna, to the show. I'm so happy to have you. Yes, I am so thrilled to be here. And um, I tried to put a recent picture in on my uh, on my little smiley face profile, but (laughs) I couldn't figure out how to get the picture on. So I'll do that later. (laughs) We'll do that later. No worries that this will go out and then this will also be out. Yep, this is broadcasting. So if you guys are listening in on Twitch, YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook, welcome, welcome. If you're here on Fireside or listening to the replay, Welcome. You guys are in for an amazing treat. So Joanna and I met, I was actually just recently on her podcast, but we met through an email chain, really. It was like a, a, a one of those like random, right? Yes. Yes. It, I mean, honestly, it was meant to be, uh, you know, we were absolutely meant to connect. Yes. We, we totally were. So it was um, one of those, I think it was like, hey, I like what you're doing on your podcast. Should we kind of um, brainstorm and see how we can help each other grow. We got on and literally talked. I think it was like a, like a 15 minute, like, you know, um, discovery call, <laughs> what we call them in a podcast world. And we talked for, I want to say it was almost an hour. And then we're like, oh it my was, gosh. It was almost an hour. <laughs> I love, <laughs> and I it love was- when that me yeah. too. I mean, it was it was definitely yeah. one of those meant to be things. And actually, I want to um, welcome you know Gina and Mark and um, Tore. I'm sorry if I mis- uh, mispronounced your name, but Gina, who is the CEO of Bomb Bomb, I actually then connected you guys because I was like, okay, wait, this is something that you guys uh, have to discuss, and we're going to get it, all of that into uh, during the podcast. Because so I would just yeah. love for you, Joanna, just to kind of introduce yourself. Talk a little bit about your childhood and then just share with us how you <laughs> became, you know, this woman that is doing all these amazing things. Yeah, yeah, great. So, uh, so I was introduced to transformational thinking at a very young age. So, um, uh, my parents were both into different programs and seminars that, um, you know, taught people how to think in ways where we could access our best self, right? So, um, you know, and so I grew up in that kind of um, different approach to thinking about life. And it's really what led me to become a psychotherapist. But what I can say is that there's a lot of transformational thinking out there that focuses on, okay, what's next? And what's, you know, where do you have to get to? And where do you have to go? And what's the next version of yourself? And that's, that's great. But that can actually, I think, lead people to have this underlying idea that, okay, well, what I have is good, but I got to keep getting better and better and better, right? And so um, I found myself like, uh, you know, after decades and decades of transformational thinking, um, I found myself in my early 40s, right, after seeing thousands upon thousands of people in my career and then also from my personal experience and recognizing that 
there's something missing when you, right, when you look at what traditional psychotherapy offers, or even what you, when you look at what traditional transformational thinking and coaching offers, right? Because we are conditioned as a culture to live in this experience of lack and, and not enoughness, if that makes sense. And so um, that's when I started developing the concepts for um, what, uh, what has become um, a method that I created called the mind method, which actually teaches people how to think in a fundamentally different way so that you are tr really transforming your experience of yourself and your life now instead of waiting until you reach whatever goal it is, whether professional goal or personal goal that we say, oh, that's the goal I need in order to feel the way that I want to feel. Wait, so I have to pause you for two seconds because I this is fascinating to me. So I love that your parents were kind of the ones that uh, introduced you because we didn't talk about this. So <laughs> I yeah. love this. Yeah. So yeah. now when you went um, to, when you were in high school, did you kind of always have an understanding that you were going to go into the entrepreneurial um, mind kind of world or how did that happen? Like when did, when yeah. you went to university, you know, what, what, how did that all kind of play out? If you can share a little bit there. Yeah, sure. So I knew, um, in high school, I knew that I was going to be a psychotherapist, right? Okay. You did. Yeah. I, however, what I am doing now, so, Oop, I think we're losing you. Is it me? Exceeds anything in my wildest imagination because I'm not doing, you know. I see you. Yeah. Uh -oh. oh, there you are. Okay, we lost you for a second. Okay. Joanna, are you there? Am I? Oh, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm so sorry. Yes, so I'm here. You might want to turn I'm off here. your Wi-Fi. We're, Gina, if you can tell me if I'm frozen or if it's just if it was just Joanna, if it was just um, or anyone in the audience, if you got Gina, uh, can you hear me, Joanna? I can hear you perfectly, yeah. and I can see you perfectly. Okay, hold on. Yeah, Gina's going to come up on stage for a second because she's going to tell us. Gina, unmute yourself. Who was frozen? Just Joanna. Okay, so Joanna, if you want to go into your Wi-Fi oh, settings, boy. just turn off your Wi-Fi. You might be having Wi-Fi issues, and then it'll just take you because I feel like you're frozen. Okay, again. Okay. I'm going to go do that right now. Yeah, thank you, Gina. Appreciate it. Sometimes it happens. It's you know, it's it's uh, 2022, okay. <laughs> and there, okay. yeah, there you go. Ah! Okay. Okay. Thank you, Gina, okay. so much. All right. We yeah. Good? So you said right. basically where I, we were is that you were in high school, knew that you were going to yeah. be a psychotherapist, but you did not realize that you were going to go the route that you did. So take, take us a little bit there. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I, uh, you know, I, I ended up, you know, becoming a psychotherapist and for much of my adult life, I had, you know, a, a thriving private practice as a psychotherapist and that was wonderful. But I knew um, that I wanted to have, I knew that the impact that I wanted to make on people's lives, I wanted to reach more than just, you know, seeing that one person um, across from me. And so, you know, the, the, I think the way that I can say that, that all of this evolved is that I never stopped focusing on my vision for what I saw. Now, I didn't even fully know what that vision was, right? I just knew that that I was supposed to have a greater impact. And I think that um, the work that I do, particularly with women now, um, I'm so good at it because I spent all those years stuck in fear and scarcity and self-doubt and 
right? And, and all of these inner feelings and inner emotions that really held me back and kept me from really uh, feeling the way that I wanted to feel, experiencing the self-love that I wanted to experience and having the life that I have. And so the, the, the short version of this is everything changed for me when I stop focusing on, okay, I've got to get there in order to feel the way that I wanted to feel. And I started creating the mind method, which is about how do you think in a way now that has you experiencing emotions right now that are the emotions of expansiveness. And what I, I think what I mean by that is you can experience the joy and the and the gratitude and the abundance for who you are and the life that you're living right now. And then it is that energy. If you know how to think and feel that way and sustain that energy inside your body ongoingly, that is actually what creates all of the miracles and the abundance to unfold in your life. Yes. And you know what I love? Because I love that because Gina totally, you know, this is something that she strongly believes in as well. And we yeah. had talked about this when we met. Um, and then when I was on your podcast, the second we jumped on Zoom and we're talking about what we were doing, we could feel each other's energy. And it was so, so freaking cool. The fact also that you're like living in New Jersey now, very close to where I grew up yes. and that you, you know, grew up on New York and that's where I am. Like we kind of flipped and- yeah. You know, you go to the beach, we live at the beach. It was just so many different things. And then the more we started talking about, um, you know, what I'm doing and, um, and then my association with Mom Bomb, um, which anyone that's listening to this, it is an amazing charity. You have to go check it out and they help moms and needs. And um, you're going to be hearing from Gina and the audience and Joanna and I as the years, you know, the years come about. It, it is stuff that is building. People that have been following me for a long time know that I've been talking about them. It's a very, uh, an amazing charity that's close to my heart that I actually had Gina on my podcast when I first started really uh, diving into people that have followed a passion and turned it into a business. She was one of my original guests, which was really cool because we've stayed connected the whole time. And then anytime I really meet people, anytime someone's put in my path, there's always some sort of purpose a lot of the times that I'm like, wait a second, I need to connect them to this amazing charity. Uh, and, and then we have to also go into the whole NFL um, thread part, how you're going to be doing some sponsorships there, which is really cool. But yeah. it was it was very apparent. And this is what I talk about on the podcast. And I know that this is something that you talk about as well. It was very apparent that we were meant to meet, right? Yep. I always talk about everyone has a path. I truly believe that everyone has a path, whether you believe in God or the universe. I believe in God. So I believe that God puts people in your path to kind of either tell you you're on the right path or direct you in a different way. And we all don't always listen. Sometimes we, you know, and, and it's not on purpose. Sometimes we're distracted by other things in life. Uh, I do believe God does that as well. It's like, okay, how much do you want this? How much, you know, do you really, you know, is, is this meaningful to you? Um, and it it stopped, like it really stopped me as I was talking to you because it was so apparent that we were put in each other's path for many different reasons and yeah. not just like, you know, just immediate, as I said. So I know this is something that you talk on your podcast. Can you share a little bit about how you're, you know, dethroning your inner critic and all of the work that you're doing with your podcast and your book, how that kind of ties into it? Yes, yes. So... So the thing that people don't know how to do is to think on purpose in a way where our the thoughts in our mind actually create the energy that we experience inside our bodies, right? I didn't know how to do that, right? We're, we're not taught that. And so, you know, I know that you experience this all the time, Juliet, where the most extraordinary things that happen to us in our life, right? The people that we meet, the, the experiences or opportunities that seem to be synchronistic, right? Those things just kind of fall into our path. And so our one and only job 
is to energetically uh, like clear our path forward, right? To energetically be able to be vibrating on an energetic level where we're pulling those things towards us. And what stops us from being able to access those things is our mind that is not only conditioned from our early childhood, but it's passed down from generation to generation to generation, right? We've been living in this world for generations upon generations where the masculine energy, and I don't mean masculine like men, okay, because every, every, everybody has masculine and feminine energy. Masculine energy has been prevalent, which is about doing and pushing and striving, right? And so we've been getting bombarded with all of these messages, right, that no matter who we are and no matter the life we're living, we just aren't enough. And, and, and that's where we've got to learn to unhook ourselves from that conditioned mind because we're never changing that mind. We're never getting rid of it. We're never making it stop what it's been saying to us for generations upon generations. And I'm so passionate about bringing this kind of different thinking out into the world because <laughs> I, I think that that's what our world needs right now. I think we are like, thank you. I, I think that we are in a state of, um, you know, crisis. And I think that the pandemic has come into our space because there needs to be a fundamental shift on the planet in terms of the way people think and feel and act and what they focus on. And you know, so, yeah. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, because there are so many things that are running through my mind, and I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. But I, felt, no. I felt like I heard a paw. Like I was like, oh, is that a paw? Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no, you did. You did. You did. I, I yeah, yeah. Well, for sure. and so, and, and this is where I would love for you to kind of also talk about. Um, so some people are just innately born with this, correct? Because, and others can learn. And others have a harder time. So I would love to touch because I know there's people listening that are like, oh, I could never do that. Or I've tried yeah. and it just doesn't happen. Or, oh, I innately do that. And I'm not tuning my own horn, but I was kind of born that way, right? That's I always cool. kind of live in a very positive space um, as I've grown older. You know, I've always been um, faithful. I wouldn't say religious. I would say more faithful and spiritual. Yes. Uh, and I always have believed that there's, you know, a, a reason for everything. Um, and I know that, you know, there's times where I've had family members that are like, so you really believe that there's a reason why this happened to me? And I'm like, I do. And I know sometimes there's like a bad, it's like a bad thing that happened. But if you look at the bigger picture, there is a reason because of X, Y, and Z. And I truly believe that. So if you yeah. can touch on that a little bit where you taught yourself, right? You studied, you did work and you were able to do it. Now there's people that I'm sure, and this is going to sound really crazy, but you guys know that I'm a dog lover and I'm obsessed with my, my boxers, but just mm -hmm. like training a dog, some dogs are going to have an easier time learning and grasping a concept than others. Yeah. And I feel where a lot of people sometimes miss, and this is where I think when you talked about the pandemic, I remember before it happened, I had said numerous amount of times, something big is going to happen because we are all just going at such a rate and such a speed. And it is prices with, you know, housing and all of it, like it, something is going to big happen. And I would just say that and, you know, it, and, and it totally did. So as I think people sometimes stop um, trying because it's too hard. Just like, you know, as I said, if you're training a dog and there you have that very stubborn dog and their mind just doesn't, so you have to keep at it. And I think people give up way too early. I do think that also with entrepreneurship where you have this idea and you go and you fail, fail, fail. And then you're like, oh, it's gotten me. I'm not doing it. And it was the path that you were meant to do on, but you just gave up too soon. Now, I know there's people out there going, well, there's the people that, you know, try something for 10, 15, 20 years, and it really was never their path and they never succeeded. But that is where 
they were they were missing something, right? They were missing something as time went on. They were getting a lot of signs that they were on the wrong path, but they chose not to kind of, or not chose, but they just, for some reason, it didn't click. Yeah. So can you discuss a little bit about how someone that really right now is listening to this going, okay, unicorn ladies, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I do. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. So I was talking before about this conditioned mind. Okay. So when you are rooted only in your conditioned mind, which by the way, most, most people are okay. And, and I mean, I was for a very, very long time and I, I still am. I just know how to, you know, unhook myself from it. So the, the conditioned mind is all about proving yourself and striving. Okay. And here's the problem with that. It's very much uh, connected to how am I viewed, right? Am I successful according to the measures of what society says success is supposed to be? How do other people think of me, right? Do I, do I, you know, and there's a, there's a different fundamental core issue that drives us. Okay. But if we're going to look at all human beings, because every human being has a fundamental core issue, it's some version of I'm not enough, or you're not enough, or it's not enough, right? So so when people are on this path and they keep going, you know, to your point, they keep getting messages that they are either blind to or they keep ignoring. It is probably that what is guiding their path is that old automatic mind. That's the mind that I call the inner critic. So let's look at, you know, just to give like a, a, a short example of this. Okay. If, if you look at a lot of very um, accomplished, successful, wealthy, beautiful people in our world, you look at Hollywood, you look at like, you know, major people that are, you know, billionaires and, and CEOs, some of them. Okay are living very miserable lives. They can't hold on to a marriage to save their life. They're estranged from their children. They're in, you know, they've got drug addiction and alcoholism and right all right they're they're miserable. They have everything that we say, "Oh my god, if I had right if I had billions of dollars and if I were gorgeous and if I were this and I were that." They're miserable. Why? Because no matter where you get to, okay, it's that is never going to give you the the feeling, the experience that you want. So it's like saying, well, the more I keep focusing on who I am not yet and what I don't yet have in my life, that feeling of lack is that's going to be the thing that's eventually going to turn into like feeling whole and fulfilled and everything, right? So to your point, we've got to get used to being uncomfortable on purpose, right? That's what the real hard, heavy lifting work is about, is using your anxiety and your fear and your anger and your sadness and whatever it is that, you know, that, that makes you feel stuck in your life, right? Right. That is the very vehicle that's going to mirror for you all of the old thoughts, the old emotions, and the old behaviors that really keep playing on a vicious cycle. So many people think that they're looking out into their wide open future. And what they're really looking out into is their past playing on repeat over and over and over and over and over again. So when people wake up to that, right? And it's a gradual awakening. It's like, you know, right? I and mean, that's why I work with, you know, I, I have programs that are a year long, right? Because it takes continuing to look at the same broken record thinking that leads to the same broken record emotions that leads to the same broken record behaviors. And when people wake up to that, and know exactly how to unhook from that, now they're rewiring what we could say is a completely different mind with completely different thoughts, completely different emotions, right? And it, what it really is, 
you are tapping into the emotions of excitement for the life that is coming to you. And you don't even have to know exactly what that life is. You are just so inwardly knowing that there is greatness and abundance in in all forms coming to you. And that's the energy that actually propels your life forward. I love that. And you know what? And I think what you touched on again, and you touched on it before about yourself, that you know how to change your habits, right? It's just same with like, you know, someone that has maybe was overweight for a a bit of a time and then they learned how to get healthy and you're going to sometimes fall back into those bad habits. But because you know how to, wait a second, I'm going too many days, you know, where I'm eating crap, I need to switch this. So that is what you're saying. It's the same sort of thing. It's the same sort of, you know, when your mind runs through habits, when your mind is taught all these different things from such an early age, or you just, maybe it's not even that you're taught, it's just that you're going through it, it continues to be a loop. And if you know how to break that loop and you know how to rewire that loop, that's when you're going to start seeing success. And when you see like the little sparks go is kind of when you got to keep going. It's almost like a little trolley that could, it's like, okay, oh, wait, I saw something good. Oh, oh. And then if you have a couple where it's going backwards a little bit, and when it's going backwards, you have to keep moving forward because if you keep going backwards, that's when you just then, you know, give up and you're like, oh, this is too hard. This is too hard. And, you know, as you, we, we said before that some people, it, it is a little bit easier than for others. Others have to put more work in it. And do you think that's just because some people are more, and I don't want to use the word stubborn because it's just kind of silly, but people are more stubborn or is it also a combination of people, you know, what their traumas were or what their rewiring, like what their wiring was? It's just harder to rewire that. So if you can kind of touch on that a little bit, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. So the thing is, what the first thing that you have to understand, regardless of what you've experienced in your past, what there is to understand is that your old mind is actually separate from you, right? So that's a huge component of this to recognize that you are actually separate from that voice. So when it starts talking to you, right? Again, this the work that I do is not about not having that voice say the same things, right? But it is about as soon as it starts talking to you, you know exactly what it is. You know where it came from, why it's there, right? You know how to recognize, and I, right, I always say, right, the, the most powerful life you can live is when you know the difference between you and the voice of your conditioned mind, which is your inner critic, right? So I wouldn't say it's harder for some people and easier for others, okay? I think that once you really understand that you're separate from that voice and right and you keep creating a space between you and it as you keep moving forward in practicing new thoughts and tapping into new emotions and having different experiences and keeping your focus on your vision and your intention that gap between you and the voice grows wider and wider and wider. So it's really, it's like, it's like building a muscle, right? You can't, if you've never built a muscle in your life, you can't start out with 25 pound weights. You got to start out with five pound weights. Okay. But let's say you've been, you know, you, you can't just, you know, all of a sudden stop exercising and say, you know what? I put in like a good amount of exercise. I think I'm going to be in shape for the rest of my life. Like it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Unfortunately, we <laughs> wish Unfortunately. it did. <laughs> exactly. So this is the same thing. Rewiring a new mind. There's not an arrival point to it. There's no end point. It's just that you, when you know how to practice tapping into a new mind and you keep doing it over and 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 over over again, you know, I can tell you that particularly, like I would say in the last five years, 
I've climbed about eight different mountains. You know, it's like once you get to the top of the mountain, you're at the bottom of the next mountain. And that's when your automatic mind kicks in, right? And says like, I'm, I'm up to some huge things right now. And my automatic mind still screams the same crap to me. Oh, you're not, you don't have what it takes. You're not good enough for this. You know, I, to, Juliet, I was on the phone with you before setting up this thing. And I'm like, oh, I suck at technology. You know, my, my, my inner critic was going crazy. I was getting all fumbled and nervous. And I, <laughs> I still didn't figure out how to change. I'm like, right. So it's speaking to me. Oh my God, you're such an idiot. You're such a this. But I know what that voice is. So it doesn't take me down the rabbit hole of not enoughness and inadequacy. I can laugh at it. I can see it. Right. And I don't, I don't have to be great at everything. And I can still access knowing my zone of genius and my power, even though I don't know how to change a freaking, uh, <laughs> <laughs> picture on my profile. <laughs> right. But, and that's what I love you said, what, what you're saying is, and this is where I think also people's strengths and weaknesses come in, right? Yeah. I mean, you and I, we talked about this. I'm dyslexic. So anyone that's new to the show um, that hasn't heard, I'm dyslexic. So school was really hard for me. I really quickly realized I learned different than all my friends. I came from a, a pretty wealthy suburb outside of Philadelphia. Um, and I remember very quickly being like, wait, why does everyone seem like they understand what, what's the, what the teacher's talking about? <laughs> why are people right. like blowing through their work when I'm like sitting here, like can't understand this. Um, but I was a really good athlete. And so I knew that that's where I would get praise. That's where I would feel really good about myself is when I went, you know, or hung out with my friends, I was a good friend and I had a good personality. And so very quickly at a young age, and I think we all kind of do that. I very quickly realized, okay, these are my strengths and these are my weaknesses. And I'm not bad. Like, I think there's a very fine line of bashing yourself with your weaknesses and truly feeling like, oh crap, like I am not a good speller. It is sometimes it's very frustrating. I, you know, dethroning your inner critic, I had to read it 50 times. I was like, this is a long one. Shit. <laughs> you know, the thing I never want to happen is that I put someone's, you know, information in wrong or spelled wrong. Cause I would feel like a schmo. But I also know that it happens and it, you know, and, and you can't beat yourself up for those things. But those are the kind of things that I get a little sweaty with. I've gotten so much better at those. Yeah. But I know that, that that doesn't define me. It's not who I am. I can't spell. I don't do math well. But you know what? That's okay. Right. Um, I have so many other great talents and so many other things that I offer people. But I think that's where sometimes people don't know how to make that switch, right? They they look at their weaknesses and they think they defined them and they don't. And it's same with trauma. You know, people that have gone through abuse or trauma. We just had um, Sharice Brown, who is Tim Brown's wife, who is a huge, uh, if you guys are um, football fans, he was on the Raiders. I mean, you know, a Hall of Famer, a Heisman Trophy winner. And she was talking about how she was sexually abused. And what she came to realize was she was not letting that define her. She was yeah. not letting that define who she was, and she was going to step out of it. And um, I think that that's a really important thing for people to hear with yeah. trauma, with your weaknesses, that that's, you have to get over them. They don't define you. You get to make your own choices. You are the only person that can get up out of bed and say, you know what, today I'm going to make it a good day. Even when, you know, you walk downstairs and you you realize, oh, wow, there's a leak in my kitchen or, oh my gosh, the dishwasher is broken or, oh, I just tripped on a dog bone. You know, when those things happen, those I truly believe it's because it's, okay, it's trying to get you to slow down for a second wow. and listen, okay, maybe today is not the day that I tackle this, but yeah. maybe I'm going to go then and I'm going to do the same thing tomorrow. I'm going to wake up and yeah. I'm going to walk down the stairs just like I did and I'm going to make this a great day. And every day that you do that, Yes. It gets easier, but again, we all, you know, especially moms and um, and and not just moms, because I know there's dads out there too that, uh, you know, take the brunt of the kids, um, you know, raising and responsibilities and, but what you know, the world, as you said, is crazy right now, and we are all getting thrown so many different things. And this is the thing that I talk to my clients or when I'm on podcasts or friends. You can't stress about things you can't control. And right. why try to, like, if you can't control them, you have to put them aside. And I used to not be good at that, but that was one thing I worked on, you know, really well. Okay, I can't control my kid's schedule if I'm going to be late. You know, I was the type of person, 
because of my dyslexia, that I would literally run through my kids' schedules when they were little. And this is like when they, you know, didn't have a ton of activities, but I'd be like, okay, what time do we need to leave for this? I don't want to be late for that. Okay. Then who has to be here next and who has to be there next? What time do I have to pick this person up? And I would run through it and I would give myself anxiety. (laughs) And finally, I think it was my husband was like, why do you keep doing that? And I'm like, well, because I don't want to be late or I don't want to miss something. That was my biggest thing because I also have attention deficit. So I never wanted to be the mom that like forgot things or like left a kid somewhere or like, yeah. you know, missed the the um, Mother's Day tea, which I did. I, I did do that and my yeah. kid didn't die, but they were oh. devastated. It was when we were moving and I, you know, was like, I had it down yesterday. But so those things, because of my, the way I learn, I sometimes... Yeah overcompensate and then I make myself crazy and I have to not do that. Like I have to know I need to check my schedule in the morning. I need to write it down, need to run it through my brain once. And then I need to stop because I need to then move on. That's right. And anxiety is exactly what you just said. It is our automatic attempt to control that which we have zero control over. Control over. And see, now we are at a real disadvantage because biologically, okay, if we look at our the hard wiring of our primitive brain, okay, our primitive brain is hardwired to keep us alive. And how do we get you right in caveman times? The way we were, we, we stayed alive is we looked for danger, right? Where's the tiger that's going to eat us? Where are the red berries that are poisonous? Let's make sure the little, you know, children don't eat the red berries. But right here we are in our modern world. And the tigers, if you guys could see me in, you know, quoting, the tigers that we're looking for are. Oh my God, people are going to think I'm that mom, right? That's scatterbrained or, right? Or, or people can't see that I, you know, I don't know what I'm doing or I'm not good enough. And, and when we focus there on trying to control that, it actually backfires, right? Because then we're in anxiety day in and day out, as opposed to, let's just say, right? Like you said, I did miss the T. My kid didn't die. Do I wish I didn't miss the T? Yes, I wish I didn't miss the T, right? But if we're so focused on trying to prevent bad things from happening or people thinking badly of us, which we can't, doesn't matter what we do, people are going to think, right? Everyone wants judgment making machines, right? So that's, that's really where you start to liberate that stuck energy that we drag around with us for so long. When we when we really start to see just how much we're trying to control that we don't have control over, most people are blind to that. And that's where a lot of our dense, heavy, stuck energy resides. Yep. And you know what? And I think what you said, like, yes, my child didn't, you know, didn't die from it. And I, I, I owned it. And I think that was really important. I said to her, I, I mean, I cried. I was like, honey, I cannot believe I missed that. I am so sorry. Mom feels, I, I mean, awful. Like I cannot believe I missed that. And I am truly sorry. Adults make mistakes too. I am not perfect. I mean, I think it was the first time my, my child realized I did make mistakes and I wasn't perfect. Yeah. Um, and that hurt, you know, in a way, but it was, it was like, I'm trying to do the best that I can. And I screwed up. I screwed up and I, you know, Oh, and then my, the teacher sent me a video. Oh, we didn't realize that you, you know, we knew you were moving. So we just figured, cause I was always at everything. I'm like, why didn't anyone text me? You know, I'm at everything. Why didn't my friends text? like, what the hell? And everyone's like, we knew you were moving and we knew that like, you know, things were crazy. And yes. oh, I got the little video of her face and, and it was, it was an, um, an acrostic, an acrostic poem with my name. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. But you know, I have to tell you the, it is so important that our children see us as the perfectly imperfect yes. human beings that we are with all of our faults and all of our flaws. And, you know, what you just said about owning it, right? You can own your faults and flaws when you, when you, 
love yourself, right? Mm -hmm. For exactly who you are and exactly who you're not, right? If you're so busy condemning yourself and putting yourself down, it's very hard to own your mistakes, right? So true. It's yeah. so true. And as you said, like, you know, each one of my kids, I think there was, a, and of course, now it's always, you know, the, the if we ever talk about like mistakes, oh, like the tea, you know, yeah, when mom missed the tea. Yes, I know I missed the tea. And then one of, you know, one of the other ones, she was late picking me up for this or, you know, and, yeah. but they know they're like, mom, you know, it is what it is. It's okay. Like, you know, it, it also builds a little resilience for them to see, yeah. okay, my mom messed up or my dad messed up. They owned it. They said, sorry. They gave me their reason. It wasn't an excuse. It was, I, for, I totally forgot. I had it in my book for the, the wrong day. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's huge. So I would love for you to now jump in and kind of tell the listeners and anyone watching the show, what was it that made you decide? And I know you said you wanted to make a bigger impact. So that could be why you wrote the book and the podcast. But if you can kind of give us a little bit of how those two mm. are what you decided, okay, yeah. this is where I want to put my energy. Yeah. So I wrote the book. The, uh, the, the book, uh, the title is Dethroning Your Inner Critic, but it walks you through the mind method. And I really wrote it because I think that we all need an owner's manual for our minds, right? It's like, you know, we, when, we, when we think that we are our thoughts, we are yeah. our right? That's, that is the fundamental issue. And I wanted to be able for people to really understand there's a lot of traditional psychotherapy and coaching and, and, and workshops and things about changing your mindset, changing your thoughts. I disagree with that, okay? Because I think it's a setup. I don't think that we can ever get rid of that old mind. And that's, that's really what I focus on uh, in the book, in the podcast, and with all the work that I do. And that's what I think people find so liberating, right? Is, you know, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of times, right? If you, right, if you continue to have fear, right? I mean, think about, think about what we're taught about confidence, right? This idea of confidence is, you know, oh, I'm self-assured and I have no fear and I, I just, I feel really great with everything I do. That's not what confidence is, right? Confidence is the ability to be scared shitless and to, right, have, a, have to step outside of your comfort zone and take all of those emotions and those body sensations that are so uncomfortable and take the action anyway, because it's in alignment with the life that you're designing, right? Yes. So that you actually become more focused on the emotions of what's possible than on the emotions that are connected to your past, which is all about fear and scarcity and lack. I love that. And I love that. And I think it's, I love what you said there is that you can acknowledge, Hey, you know, like, just like I acknowledge, like sometimes I get anxiety about like s silly things, which are not silly because they're, they're true and they're what give me anxiety, but I know how to kind of work around that and, 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 and do that gap where I can separate them. So I love that. That's how you do it. I love how you don't say, Hey, we're going to have to change you all together. And the confidence thing, it's so awesome because it is. It's it's the okay, I know I might fail at this, but I'm still going to do it because I feel confident. And I, I'm gonna bring it back to my kids again. When they were little, I used to like let them climb on like these crazy structures. Like we would be at the park and they would be really little, or um my one son and really all of them, but my one son was like amazing on these scooters. And we lived in Brooklyn at the time and we lived in Park Slope. So there was slopes. They were like all these, you know, really high hills. And he was two and had like this huge, So and he was tiny, but had this silver helmet that was like shiny reflected. And he would literally fly down the streets. I mean, people would stop and be like, oh my gosh, that kid is amazing. 
And then they would look around like, where the hell is the mom? And I would be up pushing my, you know, whatever, carrying another baby. Or a lot of times I would have the stroller, even though no one was in it, just for like groceries and dry cleaning and picking, you know, stuff up that in the city, I didn't have to carry it all. And I remember like a, a person saying to me, he could get hit by a car. And I was like, why is he getting hit by a car? He knows to stop at every street because we live in the city. So he knows he has to stop. They're like, well, what if, what if, what if? And I'm like, why am I going to hold him back for the what ifs right. instead yeah. of letting him go? And I know yeah. this sounds crazy, but that if that's like what I don't believe my child is meant to get hit by a car on a scooter. Like I, and I, maybe that's the arrogant of me, but I don't believe that that is his path. So I'm going to let him explore. And same with these, these walls. I used to let my kids cr- climb on this crazy wall and my, I'm going back to my daughter. One time she fell off and she really scraped herself and people were like, well, why would you let her on that wall? And I'm like, listen, she wants to do gymnastics. She's going to be doing these crazy things anyways. She slipped, she fell. Now she realizes she has to walk a little slower and be a little more careful and pay attention. But the fact that I was able to give her, yeah, honey, I trust that. She's like, mommy, that's really high. You think I can do it? I'm like, yep, I'm right here. And I was able to catch her. You know, she didn't, she just scraped herself a little bit. It could have been a lot worse. But again, I didn't think that that was going to be her path was going to be she's going to fall off this and crack her head. I really, so I gave my kids a lot of confidence. Again, my daughter used to climb these trees. We had this huge tree in our Connecticut house. I mean, it was like way above our house. And my husband would say, honey, like, I can't believe you're letting her climb all the way up there. My husband grew up in the city very, a little bit more sheltered than the where I kind of grew up. And he would say like, if she falls she could not just break something. Like, this is serious. And I would say to him, she is fine. She's building confidence. If she didn't trust in herself that she could make it up to the top of the tree, she wouldn't do it. That's and he was like, Perfect. okay. And I, and that was just innate in me, right? That was just something that I did because I really didn't want my kids to be scared of stuff because I would see other parents and their kids were scared. Mommy, I can't do that because I'm scared. My one son who definitely, when he was old, when he was younger had a little anxiety about doing things that he didn't know. He's also my dyslexic son. Now I kind of know it was because if he didn't understand the directions, like he knew that there was some disconnect there. And I remember very quickly where I realized, well, why doesn't he want to go like do the karate with his friend? Like that's weird. He would always be jumping into these things. And I realized I had to push him. I would Mm -hmm. say to him, okay, I'm going to count to five. And if you don't jump into it, guess what? We're going to leave. And people would say to me, well, I think he's scared. And I'm like, he is scared because he's scared he's going to fail. And they would be like, oh my God, you're so harsh. And I'm like, I'm not harsh. I'm literally, and I would, and he now comes to me because he is not, he is a fearless kid because he knows, and fearless, I shouldn't say that, he knows what his abilities are and where he needs help or where he knows that he's confident and he can do things. And I remember him coming to me and saying, mom, you could have made me like the weirdest kid. And I was like, oh, I know. (laughs) Like, I was yeah. like, honey, it was always hard for me to not, and it wasn't hard, but it was to be like, okay, I'm not going to feed into your anxiety right now. I'm going yeah. to like, and hopefully this works because who knows, right? We're all parents. We're all trying to do something. And I would count and he would jump in and I would see him like clinch. And then the second he was able to do it, he would always like look back at me and give me this like, and I could get choked up, but this like, Thanks, mom. Like, thanks for having my back. Thanks for trusting in me that I could have the ability. And, you know, most of the time, I didn't know. I just was like, okay, if they fail at this, they're going to learn. If they succeed at it, they're going to build confidence. And I think there was a part of our, and I don't think it was our so much our generation, maybe a little bit like younger than us parents, where it was the bubble, right? It was the stranger danger and, oh, you have to wear a helmet, you have to wear this and not saying that helmets are bad or whatever, but all these different things that kids had to do where they couldn't just be kids and you had to, you know, double strap yourself to this. And I would say sometimes like, just go, you guys are fine. Like, okay, you forgot your helmet. Um, And so can you talk like a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So what I think particularly if you are, if you've got a big vision for yourself, right? You want to create a business. You want to write that book. You want to be an entrepreneur. You want to get the love of your life. You want to lose massive amounts of weight and be healthy, right? You got a big goal in front of you. That is not a linear path. In other words, the goal, like the, the, the life of, of, of creating that thing that you want 
is failure after failure after failure. I can't even count the number of failures that I have had in this entrepreneurial, right? But, yeah. but, but the journey is such that you, right? That will always show you what's next. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if you so what we're really doing on this path to your point is that in many ways, it's almost like we're reparenting ourselves from the inside because a lot of these uh, beliefs and fears and doubts and insecurities, not a lot, all of them come from our childhood. Right? They get reinforced in our adult life, but they came to us. Right, the, the fundamental sense of self that we have today was solidly formed, like 90% of it, by the time we were 10. Wow. Which is insane, right? It is insane. <laughs> so if you're going to do something that you've never done before, okay, what that really entails is that you are constantly facing the unknown, right? Mm -hmm. And here's where we go back to that DNA, right? Human beings, right? We're really hardwired to be motivated by two things, seeking comfort and avoiding pain, okay? So if you are embarking on stepping outside your comfort zone over and over and over and over again and reinventing the you that you know yourself to be, you have to, you have to fight against your God-given DNA because that's, you know, I know, that's not a comfortable path. Now, it is the most rewarding, fulfilling, magical, abundant, exciting path that there is. And this is, right, how you and I got connected, right? Because we're, it, we, we're constantly putting ourselves out there and look who we're attracting and look at, right? I yes. mean, it's, it, it's, it's really, it feels like it's magic, but it's actually not. It's actually rooted in science because like energy attracts like energy. Mm -hmm. And so when you are able to know how to sustain elevated energy, even though you're facing the unknown, even though you don't know how it's going to go, even though you're risking failure, even though you're risking judgment or rejection or all sorts of things, if you know how to sustain that elevated energy, your, your life will it'll it'll actually turn out to be beyond your wildest imagination right do you, yeah. do, you, do you agree with that for oh the, totally of course of course like you can't even you can't even think about where your life can go right if it, all it is is practicing shifting your energy from the inside out that is that's the game changer it really is. And, you know, and, and I wanted, this is actually a perfect segue because when we were, when I was on your podcast, I was talking about um, the series that I have here on Fireside, the YNS Live with NFL Thread. If you guys are not familiar with it, Cynthia Zordich is my co-host. She is an uh, NFL spouse. Her husband, Michael Zordich, was in the league many, many years. And she created, she was one of my guests actually on the podcast. She was one of my guests, one of my first ones right around when Gina was around. And she created this thing called NFL Thread. It's like the LinkedIn for women of the NFL. So the spouses, because she was moved around so much. She was like, I need to be connected with other women knowing what they're doing. Or if I go to a game, you know, and I'm taking my kids, I want to know like, oh, this person's there and I can, you know, go to their brick and mortar or I need to pick up something here. And I, you know, this person can tell me, hey, this is the shop that you want to go to. She's like, I really just needed that connection. So she created that. And then at the, um, at the Super Bowl every year, she does a luncheon and where she does a luncheon for the spouses of the NFL because people don't realize, I call myself the outsider or the lay person, they don't realize all the events that are happening up until the Super Bowl. So the women of the NFL spouses have fundraisers. So there's something called Off the Field Wives Association. It's been around for 21 years. And they every time they go to a city, wherever the Super Bowl is, it is 
uh, after a charity. So they have this amazing sold out every year. They have, you know, all these gift bag, gift bag women that are, you know, present in the NFL now, or their spouses were, you know, years ago and they're retired or they're young. Um, but just some really big names. They do this every year. And then Cynthia also has this, this luncheon and they do some, well, number of years ago, they did a, um, I mean, for years, they did a flag football game on Saturday before the Super Bowl, the women, uh, and it all goes to charity and all goes to really great organizations. So this year, the fashion show is, um, Holly Robinson Pete, who, by the way, is going to be on Fireside tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern. She's going to be on the show, the NFL Thread YNS Live show. So if you guys uh, are tuning in wherever you are, you can, you know, I'm going to be live streaming, but I'm also going to be here. But they're going to be talking about the Holly Rod charity. And that's where a lot of the proceeds, it's for her son who's autistic and her dad who has Parkinson's. And for the luncheon, we have these gift bags. So I was talking about this, long story short, I was talking about this on your podcast. And I was saying, these are some really cool opportunities for people to get in front of the NFL spouse or the NFL community, maybe where they haven't been able to break in. And it is, you know, uh, if you have a brand or a book or, you know, something that you want or a product that you want to get into the hands. And afterwards, you and I were talking and you said, you know, I would love to get my book in there. And so, you're going to be one of the sponsored uh, for the gift bags, your book. So tell us a little bit about like when I was talking about it, what like just kind of it, it, like sparked you and you were like, oh my gosh, I need. Well, I that, need that's it, right? Because listen, I, like I said, I think that this book, um, the book that I wrote, I think really can change people's lives. And, um, you know, I, I, I think, um, I think because I think in a fundamentally different way right now, it's like, I can tap into like, you know, oh my God, an opportunity that's like just coming to me out of nowhere and out of nothing. And I just jumped on it. And I, I am so thrilled for these, uh, for these ladies to be able to, uh, you know, to to read the book, mostly because I think sometimes there's this misperception, right? Right, where women that, you know, right, they, they've got millions of dollars and they've got these, you know, famous NFL husbands and they've got everything that they could ever want. And, you know, that there's a misperception that therefore um, they are fulfilled and they are happy. And I think... Um, Here's what I really think. I think that our planet will be a different planet when more women know how to be fulfilled and stop thinking that the things that we think are the things that are going to fulfill us, right? We keep going for those things. And that's really, that's my passion. I mean, that's really what I'm um, committed to. So I am, I am honored to, um, to be able to, uh, give my gift of the book to them. And, um, yeah. I'm so excited about that. And so I also want to say, cause there's going to be people that are like, Oh, I'm really confident. I don't need to dethrone my inner critic, but if they're a coach or they have a daughter or they have a son or they have a husband or a niece, a nephew, a mom, whoever it is, they can read this book and then be able to um, help, you know, whether it's, again, a family member or a client. Am, am I correct absolutely, in that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, it's a very fundamentally different approach. Um, it's very different than what's out there because it, you know, it's really helping people to not change the old, but rather recognize the old and unhook themselves from it and step into something new, which I, you know, um, I've witnessed, you know, I've had hundreds and hundreds of people go through my Mastering Your Mind program. And, you know, the thing is, it's the ripple effect, right? It's when, when we are feeling good, the ripple effect that that translates into, you know, I am, um, I'm going to be married 25 years this May. It's unbelievable. Amazing. Uh, you know, and, and my, my children, my, uh, almost 20 year old, my 17 year old and my 13 year old, you know, I can honestly say that my relationships with them 
are fundamentally different than the than than they used to be because I've shifted from the inside, right? And so my shifting has has really and really my letting go, right? Letting go of the stuff that I used to try to control. It's been a game changer, not just professionally, but personally on every front. It's, it's a, yeah, Amazing. it really is. And they can also get it on Audible. So if they're dyslexic like me and reading takes a long time, they can listen. Exactly. Right? Yep. It's uh, the book is on Amazon. You can also get it on Audible. And then you know, and then I I talk a lot about the concepts of my book um, on my podcast, dethroning your inner critic. Yes. And so tell people other than Instagram, yeah. as you guys can see. And if you're not on Fireside, so you're like, what are right. they talking about? I can't see right. anything. It's dethroning your inner critic. And that is critic. Uh, your is why yeah. you are. Critic, C-R-I-T-I-C, yeah. D- right? D-E-T-H-R-O-N-I-N-G, Y-O-U-R-I-N-N-E-R-C-R-I-T-I-C dot Com. And, you know, if um, for any for any of your listeners, right, if you right, if this speaks to you and you know you have something really big, right, you've got a next chapter of your life that you want to create and you know that you need to get out of your own way, you know, I, let's talk. Go to my website, schedule a clarity conversation and let's get connected. Awesome. Awesome. And if you guys, you know, you know what to do. If you like what you hear here, this is going to be going out on my RSS feed. So you guys will be able to hear it on Apple, Spotify, and I'm not going to go through thousands of other places it also goes to. Hey, Stephanie, but you'll be able to hear it here. There'll be show notes, but, and also keep an eye out because as I said, Joanna's book is going to be in the gift bag that is going to be um, given out at the uh, YNS Live NFL Thread podcast luncheon. And so that's going to be really exciting as well. So, um, you know, keep in touch. You can go to her Instagram to follow and find more things that Joanna is doing. So thank you guys again and Joanna for joining YNS Live. And, um, you know, tomorrow, Holly, Robinson, Pete, 4 p.m. Eastern. We are here again, my co-host, Cynthia Zordage. If you guys are listening on Facebook, Twitch, um, where LinkedIn or YouTube, you guys can see it there as well. Or you can go to any of those platforms and find Fireside in your app um, store and you're able to come and be in the audience where you can clap and do other things. There's other times where we have, uh, you know, have interactive um, sessions where Joanna and I, I'm going to have her come back where she's going to be able to kind of answer questions for this. Yeah. So, um, you know, kind of stay tuned and hear what we are doing, but Joanna, thank you so much again for joining and Stephanie, Kate, Gina, and Mark, and I know a couple of other people have been in and out. Uh, thank you for yeah, joining. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Of course. Can't wait to do it again. And we'll do, we'll do a little music. And I can't wait to get the book and start putting it in the bags and start doing stories about it. And it's going to oh be really gosh. fun. Yeah, I got, I'm going gonna, 